Just uh, for starters, a little bit of a scouting report. They're going to throw the ball all over the field. How much does uh, that consume your attention, and what are you going to try and do to counter? Wow. This will take the entire time, question and answer. Um, obviously, they've done a great job of, of moving the ball, period. They, they, they run the ball better, I think, than, than people give them credit for. And, and uh, Bigelow, especially as he got, they can, he's a home run type of back. Uh, is a real powerful runner and, and has incredible top end speed, similar to, to you know some of the guys we have. He and B.J. Kelly were high school teammates in, in Fresno, um, and and just their scheme is 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 really good. Uh, you know, you, you go back to, to wherever Sonny's been; they've done a great job of, of moving the ball and scoring points. And and uh, you know, you think you have a pretty good idea of of, of what they're going to do, and they always have a little wrinkle um, that fits their scheme that is that always presents a little bit of a problem. Uh, and and for us, we need to, to continue to, to play team defense. You know, specifically to, to uh, answer your question up front, we've got to put pressure on the passer with three guys, four guys, five guys, change things up. It's a, you know, a, a young guy that hasn't played a lot of football. Uh, obviously, our crowd will contribute a great, a great part in that um, being a, uh, this is his first first road game and we want him to be as uncomfortable as possible. But he's 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 played great. He's been really mature, made great decisions with the ball um, and they've scored points against everybody. Molly, in the back. What are some benefits and drawbacks to a bye week, and how did you spend the bye week? <laughs> um, the the benefits uh, uh, you can you know get some things healed up, maybe just bumps and bruises that have been lingering. A guy that that may be limited if you're playing that Saturday. Hopefully, knock on wood, will be 100% next the following week. Um, you know, if if there's a negative, you know. Everybody involved in this are creatures of habit. The coaches, players, everybody likes to, you do this on Saturday, you do this on Sunday, Monday, you know, this on Monday, this on Tuesday, and period. And so we tried to adapt our, our, our uh, bye week this, this, this year a little bit differently than we have in the past. Coach Rad and I got together and just tried to, to, to use, you know, last week, ho hopefully we'll contribute to, to some level of success somewhere down the road, eight, nine, ten weeks from now. Uh, you know, hopefully our, our guys believe in, in what we did. They had an outstanding week. What we did was practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The players had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off, which Sunday's our normal off off day during the season. And then we just went into a, a quote unquote normal game week. Uh, so we've had two really good work days uh, yesterday and today. We're, we're really good practices, happy with where we're at from that standpoint. Um, and me personally, not, nothing real exciting. Saturday, watched a few games, uh, saw the, saw the uh, flag football jamboree, Eugene flag football jamboree on Thursday night, which was outstanding. Um, Craig Pinton's here, uh, might be coach of the year. He's got an unbelievable squad. Um, but so that was awesome to, to have a little more kid time. And the, and the rest of the coaches uh, did a great job uh, out on the road recruiting. So everybody did something good. James Zivin in the back. You mentioned getting pressure on Jared Goff. Um, Chip Kelly used to say you don't know what a quarterback has. You have a quarterback until it's like a tea bag in water. Is this kind of like getting a tea bag in hot water in Goff his first time on the road in, in an atmosphere like this? And do you want to, I guess, get him in hot water as early as possible to see how he reacts? That's that you know that's a yes. Uh, you know that it's 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 tough to play quarterback. It's the toughest toughest position in any sport, uh, and there's the threat of. You know, guys that look like Eric Armstead tackling you, and and uh, you know, part of that is just our, our effort, how how we run, and if we're rushing three guys and it seems like four or five, then that that's a great a great job because now your coverage you can you can mess with your coverage a little bit differently. Um, but that that that's you know that's object A of any defense against any player that's any year in school. You know, if, if the guy was a fifth year senior, you'd still want to put pressure on him. Uh, but he, he's done a great job and they, they do a really good job in their scheme of getting the ball out of his hands. Uh, you know, they don't take, they're not a seven step drop, you know, five progression read type of system. The ball's up and out. And, and, and that helps again, a, a younger guy build some confidence, get some, get some rhythm, get the ball out of his hands. Ryan in the front. Mark, I'm not trying to jinx anything, but I think you guys are the only team that hasn't turned the ball over this year in the country. Can you just talk about how you guys emphasize that and what the practice philosophy this is, like is on if that? You, if you walked up to, you know, Randy Johnson and it's in the bottom of the ninth and he's 0-2 count, perfect game. No, uh, we can talk about the things that, that contribute to that, and, and that's something that we, we – 
that's a big deal. You know, the ball, the, the turnover margin and, and scoring points off turnovers is the number one contributing factor to winning and losing. And that, that's the biggest stat in football. Um, there's, there's a couple more that are, that are almost as important that are, that are weird, but turning the ball over and, 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 or not, and, and scoring off of turnovers is, is key. And so we're going to keep hammering what we've been hammering for sure. Ryan, I'm sorry, Andrew, I'm out. You've been around a lot of young quarterbacks in your coaching career, and you had a pretty good freshman, obviously, last year with Marcus. What do you see about Jared in this kind of first quarter of his season that has led to his success? Is, is it mechanical? Is he a quick getting the ball out of his hands or decision making? What do you, what's led to this success? I think I, he's, a, he's a really good player. And then he's in a great system for, for that kind of thing of, of they, they, uh, you know, they, they complete a lot of a short, quick passes, whether it's the tight end, uh, the screen game, they'll have a lot of, you know, similar to us, they'll, they'll run a run play, but they'll kind of throw about a seven yard out, which is sort of legal, uh, which, which is, and I say that in admiration, uh, and and just get the ball out of his hands, you know, uh, uh, making it making it simple, and then they've got a, you know, a couple guys on the, on the the end. Treggs Treggs can go up and get it. They've got a couple of the guys that can really go up and get it and create big plays, uh, you know, outside. And so I think it's it's a nice marriage of a really skilled guy and he's he's well coached. Joey, we were talking about with Coach Eliotti the. Uh the amount of plays that Cal likes to run. Do you guys feel like because you already practice so fast, you have an advantage now game planning for a team like Cal's offense? Hopefully, hopefully they, you know, they've run a a lot of plays. They run, they've run a lot more plays than we have. And, uh, but hopefully that's something that's just kind of built in, built into our guys. Uh, maybe it's just how we communicate or how we substitute or, or, you know, we've seen guys snap the ball fast before and, and that, you know, it's not, it's not going to make our guys, instantly uncomfortable which you, you can see them in, in some of these other games there's there's teams that aren't aren't lined up or aren't uh you know they're trying to substitute it maybe at the wrong time but hopefully that's not something that, that throws us off too much marcus has only been sacked i think twice this season do you attribute that more to his speed and athleticism or to the offensive line it, just like anything's a combination you know of of Passing efficiently, everybody has to the the you know the route runner has to be urgent in his in his his depth, his angle, his all the, all the timing that goes into that. You have to protect it, you know, in correlation with the depth of the route, and the quarterback has to to make a great decision and and throw it on time. And so that's that again is something that is attributed to to everybody. There's certainly some times that that we could protect a lot better, and he's he's used his athleticism, which is you know that's okay, um, but we'd still like to to, to protect a little bit better. Rick, that you saw uh, a few of the games this this last Saturday in the Pac-12 as a conference had a very good non-conference results this year. They they had had their way with most of the other teams. In watching on Saturday, were you able to get a look around the conference and going into conference play? What are your thoughts about the conference this year, and maybe who has surprised you that you've seen so far? I'm a bad person to ask. I mean, yeah, when you watch the games, there there was a lot of you're just looking at it from a totally different frame of reference. I'm looking at of how what can we get from this game to teach our guys to not have you know not make that same mistake or something. It's not where do we lie in the you know world of football rankings. You know what I mean? Uh, like I was watching the I think we were talking about some of this the other day with the Marshall Virginia Tech game. There were a bunch of things that was a, a, a three overtime game. And there was a bunch of unique situations that came up in that game. You know, by virtue of being a, a triple overtime game, uh, just a bunch of other situational stuff, uh, new rule stuff. The targeting thing happened a few times, um, but the the pack. You know, the Pac-12 is an excellent conference. Very, very deep, very diverse. A lot of uh, newness to, to either systems. Uh, there's a couple couple teams in the conference that have completely changed their system, and then there's a, obviously a few new coaches that have changed. You know what was a, a system in place, and so it's a it's a it's certainly different and deep and uh, very well coached. Sean, when is the last time that you think you guys have played someone that does run this tempo? What's the last? opponent that you guys have faced that played us like this um oh my gosh i don't know i'm trying to think arizona state is is very similar who, who else would we have played last year dave you have your stat sheet on you <laughs> um i i don't know somebody in that realm you know uh of of uh, uh just get back on the ball and run something quickly 
Um, you know, I, 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 hopefully that that's not a huge issue for our guys. Uh, it's more of, of the substitution patterns. You know, you can't if if you and I are rotating in at nickel, we can't just say, hey, every four plays we're going. It's if there's a penalty, you're going or if it's a change of possession, you're going or if, the, you know, some odd circumstance, you, it, it just kind of uh, which our guys are used to used to doing. Okay. Nick, we're talking to Nick. He said that uh, he was telling his defensive lineman to be like chief in one floor of the cuckoo's nest and get your, get his hands up. <laughs> Do you have any liter- literary references for your offensive they, guys? They all week? simultaneously went. What are you, What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. You can't. Yeah, you can't even make like Michael Jordan references with our guys. They have no idea who they are. One floor of the cuckoo's nest. That's yeah. It's you always feel bad when you tell a joke referencing like the Brady Bunch or the Vacation movies because everybody's like, huh, huh. Um, I, I, no, I'd have to work on that. Dikembe Mutombo. Who's the modern day Dikembe? That's probably even too old. Any other questions?